Are Batman and Robin too gay? Psychiatrist Frederick Wortham seemed to think so. If you've been in the comic book space for any amount of time, you might have heard of Frederick Wortham, or at least his book Seduction of the Innocent, or at the very least, The Comics Code Authority, which, you know, you might have seen a little rectangle stamp thing which says, approved by the Comics Code Authority and some older comic books. Yeah, that's all thanks to Freddy. You know those motherfuckers who are like, oh, video games cause violence in kids, right? It's it's basically the same concept. It is the same concept. If you read his book, Seduction of the Innocent, a lot of his evidence is like, hey, look at this kid who did this bad thing. That kid read comic books. And it's like, yeah, Freddy, everybody was reading comic books. Like, seriously, everyone was reading comic books back in the day. And not just superhero comics. There was a lot of crime and horror comics, which is a lot of what Frederick Wortham had a problem with. And he used a lot of their um, violent, gruesome imagery as proof that comic books were corrupting the youth. Now, our boy Wortham wasn't just some nobody off the street. He had a lot of credit to his name. Like, for example, he worked at the, hold on, uh, the Bellevue Mental Hygiene Clinic. Uh, that's where uh, felons and criminals would receive, you know, their psychiatric evaluations. And Wortham was, like, on the senior staff over there. He even um, did the uh, evaluation of this guy named Albert Fish, uh, who was a serial killer who did a lot of messed up stuff that I can't really say here because... Is pretty messed up. He also opened up his own clinic in a basement of a church in Harlem just because he wanted to help underprivileged youth, which is, you know, pretty cool, I guess. But this is where I think it's important to factor in confirmation bias and the fact that correlation doesn't equal causation. If you run clinics like this and you're in the field of psychiatry, you're going to be seeing troubled youths. And there's a lot of reason why those youths could be troubled. But if the common element that you're seeing is that they all read comic books that might lead you to believe hey these comic books have some pretty wild stuff in them that must be leading these kids to be leading these troubled lives but not necessarily in fact if you look at the modern version of this do video games cause violence in kids and numerous studies have found no correlation between video games and actual violent acts so but back to Batman and Robin. I want to read you guys a little excerpt from Seduction of the Innocent to see what old Freddy had to say about Batman and Robin. Sometimes Batman ends up in bed injured, and young Robin is shown sitting next to him. At home, they leave an idyllic life. They are Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson. Bruce Wayne is described as a socialite, and the official relationship is that Dick is Bruce's ward. They live in sumptuous quarters with beautiful flowers and large faces. They have a butler, Alfred. Batman is sometimes shown in a dressing gown as they sit by the fireplace. The young boy sometimes worries about his partner. Something is wrong with Bruce. He hasn't been himself these past few days. It is like a wish dream of two homosexuals living together. Sometimes they are shown on a couch, Bruce reclining, and Dick sitting next to him, jacket off, collar opened, his hand in his friend's arm. He also goes on to point out that uh, the fact that Catwoman is a villain who wears leather and has a whip is, is meant to scare men away from uh, liking women, which, uh, you know, men famously don't like uh, women in leather with whips. That's, uh, that's not something. Yeah. <laughs> All this shit got brought up to Senate hearings, and, and although it was mostly dismissed by Wortham's, you know, uh, intellectual peers, shall we say, uh, the general populace really clung on to this idea of that comics books were, were evil and shit. And, you know, of course, this led to the Comics Code of Authority that I mentioned earlier, where they would have to submit their books to this, you know, committee, and they would say, you know, they had this whole list of things that you couldn't do. It's very interesting. I'll put it up here. But also, one of the effects of this was that uh, 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 Batgirl and Batwoman were created because uh, they didn't, they were like, oh, see, see, look at that. They like, they like, they like, they like women. So they're not, you know. Now we even have a Robin who is gay. Uh, it's Tim Drake. Uh, he's a uh, bisexual. But of course, this has led to the same old tired arguments about diversity in media and whether comic books are corrupting the youth along with other forms of media. And uh, it's led people to ask, 